Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're getting nostalgic about FC24, the game that is basically over, but will 100% go down as one of the wildest FIFAs, now FC of course, of all time. All because of so many reasons. EA's biggest mistake ever, I bet you can remember what that is, and one of the best things that EA have ever added to Ultimate Team in its existence. Even some things that I forgot about looking at my list that I have prepared here for you guys. The unlimited pack glitch during team of the year. Who remembers that? And the trickster plus glitch where you could attach the ball to your player and run into the goal. That was absolutely mad. Guys, this video is going to be so much fun. I even forgot some of these things and how much has happened during this last year of FC24. So if you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe if you are new. Let's get straight into it. Number one on this list is the unlimited pack glitch that happened during the team of the year. Now, I know not everybody was involved in this. I was definitely not. We were aware of it at the time, but we knew there was probably going to be some bans that came out of it, right? Whenever it involves unlimited, whenever it involves packs and doing something like this, you always know there's a very high chance at a ban. Now, this is what happened because I almost forgot about this. During team of the year, there was a glitch going around on new accounts only. People were starting brand new Ultimate Team accounts and going in and completing objectives. That was how this glitch worked, right? You would go and play some games or there was actually a crafting objective at the time, kind of like the one that we have right now inside of the preseason promo. You would do a crafting objective, can do the SBC, and you get objective progress and you would claim the individual objectives, but you would not claim the group reward. Log out, log back in on the web app, it says here. I don't remember that part, but then you would claim the group rewards and then you would log out and you would log back in and it would still say that your group rewards were there to be claimed. So people would just do an objective, um, complete it, claim the individual stuff, then log out, log back in, and you would get that entire objectives packs again for literally doing nothing. That was the unlimited glitch during, it was at the beginning of Team of the Year, which was crazy because Team of the Year is one of the wildest times on the game where everybody's been saving packs for a while trying to pack some of the best cards that we will see for a while in the game. This year, they had two playstyle pluses, which was a huge meta increase in the way the cards were moving on the game. Anyway, it was insane. Guys, I know it was only for new accounts, so it didn't impact a lot of people. And a lot of people, including myself, stayed away from it because I was like, I don't want to be involved if they do start banning people for it. But that was one of the biggest things that they did this year. How can that even happen? Like, how does this stuff, number one, how does it get discovered? Who's doing this to discover it? And number two, how does that even happen? Like, that's crazy that we had an unlimited infinite pack glitch this year. So that was a crazy one. Let's talk about something better. Number two on the list is evolutions, evolutions, whatever you want to call them. I think, guys, this is one of the biggest Ws that EA has ever added to Ultimate Team. And it wasn't pretty all year long, but just the concept of taking a player that would never get a promo card ever and upgrading them and being able to use them in ultimate team whether it was after one evolution two or three some of these other evolutions that took bronze cards to meta versions or silvers up to meta versions were so cool and it just gave you the opportunity to customize your squad more than ever before right that was how ea promote evolutions to us and i feel like for the most part evolutions really did a lot of that now there's also there were some crazy crazy cards that were created this year from Evos. We just had the first all 99 stat card during uh, preseason, a footies card that was a silver that you could multiple upgrade. That was the first time ever, like a historic card. But even back to the beginning of the year, I think this Marcus Llorente Evo was a very legendary Evo if we kind of take a look back on it, because this was the first evolution that was a lot of coins, first of all, it was 150,000 coins. But this was a card that people realized, okay, evolutions are more than just fun. These are meta cards that you can create as well. People use this right mid, right back Urente card even as a center mid card as well. Up until almost team of the year, this card was usable and it was a really, really good evolution. Of course, we had winter wild cards, Evos, those were crazy. This Pep's Legacy Evo will go down as well as one of the craziest evolutions in FC24. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember it. Even as I go and look at some of the Evo players that are in my club still, which actually, if you want to go ahead and do this, you can go into your club and search by in-progress evolution. And I believe this is still working. It shows you all the different Evo types, like all these Evos I've completed and they're here, but it'll show you all the different Evos, which I actually love. But some of the later on high rated ones, of course, look pretty crazy. But like this, this is my Pep's Legacy 
legacy choice. This Sessegnon card, 292 games that I played with him. Uh, this Mahmood card was from the first Evo of the year, or one of the first ones, where you could take a bronze card and level them up to a gold, and then I Evoed him later. This Ragoni card was a multiple Evo chain card that ended up being cracked for me. Jesus Feida was cracked, and this Kyle Walker actually ended up being the most capped player in my ultimate team. 789 games for this Kyle Walker right back card. Evos were amazing, and I hope they continue to be amazing in FC25. We loved them this year because it just gave us the opportunity to customize. It, it put the control in our hands, right? This squad right here of a whole city, past and present team with evolutions, never were you before able to do something like this. Absolutely love it. I think one guy in this tweet that I posted today responded and put a Birmingham past and present team as well. This is just the passion squads, players that, you know, you watch for your favorite club, your favorite nation, that you can finally create a squad for over time. You can't get them done straight away and have a crack team always, but it's more so the passion and the fun that comes out with the evolutions. We absolutely love it, and we're looking forward to it in FC25. Now, in relation to those evolutions, there was a big problem in FC24, and that brings us to number three on this list, market bans. Guys, for the first time ever, I have been trading. I've been playing this game now. This will be my 10th FIFA. I started FIFA 15, FC25, 10 years. I've been trading at least a little bit every single year. For the first time ever this last year in 24, I had my coins wiped. I'm always doing pretty crazy trades. We're making a lot of coins, and I've never had my coins wiped before. But this last year, it happened, and I still have no idea why. But the real the thing that was the problem was a lot of people were getting market wiped and coin banned this year because of the system that EA has in place to control those bans and those coin wipes was not working correctly and especially revolving around evolutions. There were big problems. Bronze cards like this Kobe Menu would go from like 100 coins or 200 coins to 10,000 coins extinct because of a crazy evolution. People that had a couple invested on their transfer list or even bought a few and just waited for a card to go up because that became a popular trading method during the year was buying cards that were eventually going to fit evolutions whether it was bronzes silvers or golds and wait for them to go up in price they would go up so much and become extinct that when you would sell them for the max price or even near the max price in multiples you would get banned from the market that was honestly for a lot of you guys i know one of the things that made you not want to play the game anymore because when you don't have access to the market and the cards and buying and selling even for doing sbcs is such a big thing it can be a very big detriment to your playing enjoyment when you're not able to access the market and that happened a lot this year so EA need to really fix up this year for FC25 with the market and for price ranges too, man. Another thing to mention is price ranges. I think we'll get to that a, li a little bit later on in the video. Um, actually, let's talk about it right now. Price ranges is a big part of that, guys, right? There were players that got banned this year because a player had a minimum price and they were not selling on the market. They were flooded on the market at this minimum price. The price would get downgraded to where they would actually sell and then people would be selling four or five, six of them that they had on the transfer list and they would get coin wiped and their coins would go away. That's a big problem. So hopefully this year, the coin... Uh, wipes and the market bans happen only for those who like are legitimately misusing the market and hopefully the price ranges are better managed this year as well that's a huge huge thing because that really hurts a lot of people wanting to play this game now one thing that also hurt hurted a lot of people's desire to play this game we're talking number four on the list and that is the league one player pick glitch in my opinion guys this is the second biggest glitch of the entire year guys we all remember the league one player picks that looked like this for a short number of hours after weekend league started during league one team of the season the weight was juiced and that was the problem ea didn't like that they didn't want that to continue they didn't want everybody having mbappe and usman dembele and zaire emery as the most cracked cards in league one team of the season so they reduced the weight but the problem was they let it go on so long that so many people were playing weekend league and trying to get these cards like under this this is going to be one of the most legendary fifa tweets or ea tweets of all time we've identified an issue where the champions player pick rewards were providing unintended results 
results, right? That became a meme during this year. The unintended results, right? This has been corrected in game. And it also fell after they corrected the weight on these picks that it went from like this crazy good to terrible. Like weekend league rewards after they fixed it were unbelievably bad. But this is just one of those situations where it happens every single year to an extent. But like this made everybody mad, so bad. And rightfully so because EA made a mistake. And instead of kind of letting it play out and kind of like owning the mistake a little bit, I think they chose the wrong way of fixing it. They just put the weight back to where it was and they didn't really compensate or they gave us extra player picks, I think, for it or something like that. But the weight was terrible on those, so it didn't really matter at all. And right, you see here with the uh, the note on X on Twitter is that the probability was the issue. There was nothing wrong with the player picks. Like they were giving out what the description on the player picks were. It was just EA didn't want everybody running around with those crazy cards because, yeah, that wouldn't help them make as much money. So, yeah, that was a really, really tricky one. That created a lot of, I don't know what the word is, kind of just a lot of feeling in the community, a lot of frustration, madness just to, to EA in general and kind of rightfully so because that was a big mistake but it was the last straw because of a mistake that had happened earlier let's go to number five on this list this is a positive one guys I want to talk about icons we'll talk about content a little bit here with the icons that we had we had the first ever live and upgrading icons remember Black Friday Black Friday on FC 24 might be the best Black Friday that we've had in a long time sure there was a lot of packs in the store and that was the whole point of it but the content that we had with the Thunderstruck players and the Thunderstruck icons was crazy. Guys, remember this year, we didn't have a base, mid, and prime version of all the icons. All we had was one base version. And then from there, EA gave us promo icons, which there were some positives to that and some negatives. But this promo with the live icons was crazy. And also just with the Thunderstruck cards in general, with just having live cards that were icons kind of blew our minds in a sense. We've been used to live cards with Road to the Final and like, you know, Fantasy and all that. But these Thunderstruck icons were pretty mad. The, the Thunderstruck players were mad as well. The pack weight was really good during the Thunderstruck promo. It's actually, Thunderstruck might be, I know a lot of people have recency bias and think a lot of the more recent end game promos in FC24 were the best. But if I'm thinking about the best promo of the year, I think Thunderstruck is at least a top three, if not number one, for how much it moved the power curve, for how crazy the content was in SBCs, in packs, and in evolutions. Black Friday on FC24 went crazy. So we love the uh, icons with the promo cards. Um, there's some problems with it, of course, as they move throughout the year. Some icons get left out. Eto this year felt very left out. Eusebio even as well after he had the early SBC. But overall, it does give you some really crazy versions of a lot of players. And with Evos too, you were able to Evo some of those players down the line, which was a W as well. So the live icons and some of the, um, the promos around that were pretty cool this year. But especially that Black Friday promo deserves a shout. Now let's get to number six on the list we're talking about another glitch guys and i want to show you this glitch right here because you might remember if you missed out on this glitch this was the cla craziest glitch i have ever seen in terms of gameplay in ultimate team the trickster plus glitch it happened early on in the year because of a new skill move right we talk about playstyle pluses and we will a little bit here in a second but it was a trickster plus skill move that you could do you could literally glitch the game into attaching the ball to your player and you could run with the ball into the back of the net you could run with the ball so you were obviously going faster than dribbling you could run by everybody and just score every time it was the craziest glitch ever and i think there were people that got banned of course when it comes to gameplay glitches those are the most banned glitches for sure every single year like people who participate in it's a rewards glitch or like a gameplay glitch like for foot champs we've had glitches in the past those almost result in like insta bans but that one was just crazy because never ever have we seen something like that where the ball attaches to the player and you can just run around the pitch and score goals so that was really really crazy and just seeing that clip and watching that honestly just this makes me laugh like how is that even how is that possible to be in a video game like what a glitch that was just an honestly a crazy crazy glitch i will never forget that if something ever happens again like that i mean it would just be crazy so moving on to number seven on this list guys we have to talk about ea giving coins back 
as compensation. We talked about compensation a little bit earlier on in relation to some other items, but I'm going to pull up one card right now, and a lot of you guys are going to remember what happened with Yaya Toure, Fantasy Foot Hero card. For some, well, he's extinct right now. Never mind. For some reason, this Fantasy Hero Toure was upgraded to the wrong league. Of course, these were live cards. He had either a goal or a club scored enough goals. Manchester City, I think, scored enough goals for him to get upgraded to another uh, rating level, boosted up, and all of a sudden, EA changed his league from Premier League to La Liga. But again, this happened earlier on in the year, so people were ready for it. They compensated people who had this fantasy hero Schneider and Yaya Toure. If you bought the player while he had the incorrect league, La Liga, on the market, they were sent their coins back in the coming days. This happened earlier on. Actually, as we mentioned, Thunderstruck. Thunderstruck Cruyff had an incorrect playstyle plus for a short amount of time in game. People who bought that Cruyff with the wrong playstyle plus were given their coins back and they got to keep the card. Guys, this created one of the biggest market inflation periods on the high tier of this game ever during the March, April, and May times heading to team of the season. Prices on the most meta cards in the game were crazy, crazy expensive because people took advantage of this glitch. And this is something EA's never done before. It happened, I think, three or four times this last year where EA gave coins back for the mistakes that were happening on the market. Honestly, I don't know if I really love this. I don't think they should do this going forward. I understand why they did it because they're trying to give you your coins back. And for people that took advantage of it, it was a crazy W, but it just made the market worse for everybody else who at least had a decent amount of coins because it made all those crazy like high level players, the pro level players, the best of the best, the chase that everybody's trying to get on this game, the 90 whatever rated the team of the years, all those were super unobtainable in price because there were so many more coins on the market because EA literally created coins out of midair giving them back to these people. And then they still had the card so they could sell the card and make profit on that as well. So that was a crazy situation. And I kind of hope that they don't do that at FC 25, but since they did it in 24, I could see it happening. We will have to see. Now, another thing that was a good addition, number eight on this list is we're talking about play style pluses. I know a lot of people have differing opinions on this, but in my opinion, I think play style pluses were a nice addition to the game because a lot of them were usable at different times of the year. As the meta changed and his cards came out, the finesse plus play style was always there. It was always very good. The technical plus play style was always very meta as well. That was something that we looked for in the early game. Finesse plus, technical plus. Remember when Trivellas were super OP? The Trivella plus playstyle was very sought after as well. Long ball pass this year was a very, very sought after one. Anticipate plus for sure. And how could we not talk about Aerial? Aerial plus will probably go down as the playstyle plus of the year. And I just like how it kind of evolves your player and it kind of gives the player unique abilities in a sense, but the abilities also represent for the most part. Now that we're here in the end game, some of these abilities are like, okay, well, you know, sometimes for Ronaldo's finesse shot plus for Ronaldo really accurate when, you know, power shots are definitely more accurate in my opinion. Power header is definitely more accurate as well, but some of these players, I think we can all agree by the end of the year, even with like Evos and stuff, some of the play style pluses are a little bit, you know, not realistic, but it also is part of the fun with the high rated cards at the end. But, you know, play style pluses had a huge impact on the gameplay this year. It definitely differentiated cards a lot, which is what I think EA was going for. And it did make the game more fun and unique in some ways, but... Again, the things that were ununique about it is that everybody was going for the same meta play styles to play the game and to succeed in the best way possible. So it did feel like also that it didn't help the game because it just pushed things that were meta into its own even smaller category. And you had to have this play style plus or this play style at least to be meta in the game. But it was at least a very interesting addition. And I'm a fan of them personally because of how it makes some person different than another player because they have a play style plus and the other player doesn't. So I think that's a W, but they did impact gameplay a ton. Now we're at the last two on this list, guys. I know what you've been waiting for. You've been waiting for this right here. Number nine on this list is the biggest mistake that EA have ever made in the history of Ultimate Team. The Team of the Year Messi 0.7% glitch from the 86 plus Team of the Year Leagues SBC. And if you weren't around for this or if you missed it for whatever reason it was, 
this is when EA basically gave out Team of the Year Messi to so many people that it made this card annoying. And it kind of made this Team of the Year Messi, which may be his last Team of the Year ever, so infamous, guys. Because, I mean, even the, the dynamic image is so amazing, but this card now gets a bad rap and people are disgusted when they see this because it was, again, similar to the League One player pick glitch. A player pick was released during Team of the Year calls the 86 plus Team of the Year League's upgrade SBC, and the weight was unintended and Messi was coming out of these player picks like crazy I will never forget opening the player picks on stream and seeing multiple Messi's come out in a short period of time thinking that we were just getting cracked luck and then going to Twitter and seeing Messi after Messi after Messi on my timeline it was unbelievable guys like again I have never seen anything like this and it was so crazy because at the time I don't know how much on the market Messi was but he was at least four to five million coins this team of the year card when this glitch happened and of course his price dropped and then came back up but what's the date on this the date on this uh this tweet it is january 30th what's his price on january 30th um okay so his price didn't move a ton probably did in real time during the day but he was nine million coins guys 9 million coins EA gave out this card. Now, the 0.7% that, um, that we're kind of saying here, this comes from EA's statistic that they put out. They made, they knew this was such a big situation. They had to create a whole different article on it. And they said that in that time frame, it was 24 minutes that the SBC, the 86 plus pick was live for prior to it being removed. I mean, they acted pretty fast. 24 minutes is pretty speedy for EA, but when it's a 9, 10 million coin card, how, how are they not going to act fast? They they said that an estimated 0.7% of Ultimate Team players obtained the Team of the Year Messi item, to which we heavily disagreed with because we knew that this number was not all of the active only players on Ultimate Team. This probably included a lot of the Ultimate Team players that hadn't played Ultimate Team in ages or maybe had accessed Ultimate Team one time in FC24. They counted as a part of that. And of course, how many people were not even online during this period? That's the bigger part about it, right? And that's how it always is with glitches and stuff like this. When you're not online to take advantage of it and you're there for it, then you feel like you missed out on something. And so many people feel like they missed out because it was such a short period of time. They wanted a chance at doing this 86 plus player pick and they didn't get it. Craziest thing ever, guys, honestly. A player of this messy caliber, a card with two playstyle pluses at that time and being 10 million coins. I mean, EA's never given out team of the years for free from packs in terms of a glitch before. And that is why it makes the that's why this is the biggest glitch of all time when it comes to a pack glitch and it, it comes to team of the year. Like, I don't even know what, what else to say. That right there made so many people quit the game because again, just like League One after that, it felt like that the weight on the team of the year cards went crazy, crazy low. We took a lot of things from team of the year in FC24 that we're gonna be implementing in FC25 to hopefully have better luck and better chances at packing the team of the years once we get to that stage of the season because honestly, that was crazy. And the last thing, number 10 on this list actually involves team of the year as well. Basically with the team of the year pack glitch, the team of the year messy glitch, and the team of the year gameplay glitch with this video right here, which is gonna go down in FIFA history or ultimate team history, always be on the game during team of the year. This is by hands down the funniest video uh, during team of the year. One of the funniest videos of all team I've ever seen, guys. If you've seen this video, the game was glitching out at one point during the early stage of team of the year. Players had hands for heads. They were missing limbs, like penalty shootouts. The goals were going crazy. The ball was moving slow. It was one of the wildest things I had ever seen in terms of the gameplay. The Trickster Plus glitch was crazy, but this was this was just as crazy, man. Like seeing the goalpost like completely envelop the goalie, like it was wild. This tweet right here from the Pentes is definitely gonna go down as one of the funniest FIFA tweets I've ever seen. Uh, his commentary makes it even better. I'll drop a link to this down below in the description if you want to check it out because. It was just hilarious, man. And I wasn't even in the game when this happened, but I, there were clips everywhere about it. It was honestly the craziest gameplay glitch I've ever seen, apart from the Trickster Plus glitch. So which one of these 10 things did you guys remember? Or which ones impacted you most? Overall, I don't know. This, this year of FC24 can probably be summed up by the biggest mistakes ever, but also the most customization ever with the evolutions and the inclusion of playstyle pluses. Um, it was an interesting year for sure. A really, really 
really interesting one, 100%. And we didn't even mention store packs. Like there's so many things that we didn't even mention that happened during this year. Um, SVCs, end game stuff, like greats of the game icon. There's so many different promos that we'd have to mention as well. But let me know down in the comments what you guys took away from FC24. As we get really close to FC25, you're going to want to get locked in and get subscribed to the channel because we're going to have a lot more videos upcoming. As Of course, we're all opening 85 times 10s right now on repeat, which is uh, an exchange pack here where I got this 97 Schmeichel. I'm going to have to rinse it. I'm excited to keep doing a few of those and progress towards my FC25 rewards. But I wanted to make this video today to look back on FC24 and just all the crazy stuff that has happened this year before probably a just as crazy FC25. So if you enjoyed the video today, drop it up to Bonnet, comment below if you have any questions, and of course, subscribe if you're new. I will see you guys in the video tomorrow. It's been Nathan for the Have a great one. Peace.